Today I'm going to try to explain the Linux directory structure. So today we're going to take a look at our Linux file system. Okay guys, today we're going to take a look at the Linux directory structure. Uh, how directories are organized, the hierarchy of the, the directory structure in Linux. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up a file manager. So I'm going to open up the Ranger file manager. And of course it opens up by default in my home folder where we want to start though explaining the directory structure of course is in the root folder. Uh, this is the topmost directory in the Linux structure. All right and in your home folder you have I don't know 15 or so 15 to 20 directories in your home folder. There may be some variance among different Linux distros exactly the, uh, the folders that will be in your root folder, but for the most part, you're going to have the ones I talk about today. The first one, bin slash bin. Bin stands for binaries. That is where the binary uh, packages live on your system. That's one of the places. There are other bin folders on your system as well, but slash bin is one of the places that binaries can be found on your system. The next uh, directory going down the list alphabetically is boot slash boot. Now the slash boot directory contains files required for starting your system. Uh, don't touch that directory. Uh, unless you really know what you're doing and have a need to be in that directory, don't go in the boot directory. All right, moving down the list here, dev slash dev slash devs. Dev stands for devices. So when you say plug in a device like an USB stick or an external SSD drive or whatever you may have, um, that's where it's going to appear. So it'll pop up there. And that is, you know, when you plug in your live USB sticks or whatever you're booting off of sometimes, uh, you know, there'll be slash dev slash SDB or whatever slash dev. That is that, that folder. Uh, the next directory we need to discuss, of course, is the Etsy folder. Etsy, of course, is, stands for etc. And the slash Etsy directory is a little confusing because I'm really not sure exactly what gets put in that folder. It seems to be kind of a dumping ground for the most part. But a lot of what you find in the slash Etsy folder are config files for the most part. Uh, some of the important stuff you find in the Etsy uh, folder. I know, well, let's just go ahead and go to the Etsy folder. And I will scroll down through some of the uh, stuff in the Etsy folder. You find uh, Bluetooth, Cron, uh, Dbus, Gconf, the Gconfig. You find IP table stuff. Uh, further down, Systemd, you find the X11 folder. This is where you would find your xorg.conf file. So a lot of important stuff in the Etsy folder. Moving down the list of the directories in the root directory, home. Home is where, of course, your home folder is. This is where all the users on the system have their home folders. On my computer, I only have one user, DT. So that's why I only have DT here in the home folder. Of course, if I there were multiple users, if I had other people living here using this computer, you know, say Mary was a user then we would have two home folders. We would have home slash DT and slash home slash Mary, et cetera, et cetera. All right, moving down, lib slash lib slash lib. Lib stands for libraries. This is where all the libraries live on the system. You know, a lot of programs, you know, they have a lot of extra libraries required to run the program. That is where slash lib and the one right before it slash lib 64. That is what they're for, libraries. All right, slash MNT. MNT basically stands for mount. This is where uh, where you would manually mount storage devices or partitions. It's not something most Linux users have to deal with nowadays, but that directory is still there. All right, moving further down the list of directories here in our root directory, opt slash opt, O-P-T. Opt... Uh, I believe back in the old days st stood for option. Uh, you can think of it as uh, optional. 
standing for optional really and the op directory is where the software you compile yourself usually gets installed in that particular folder that directory slash opt so uh, most of you probably don't compile a lot of your own program sometimes i do uh, i'll find something that's just not in anybody's repos and you sometimes you just have to build it yourself that's that tends to be the folder that the directory where a lot of that stuff gets placed uh, moving down the list here proc slash proc very important folder proc stands for uh, processes it is a virtual directory uh, the information in it information about your CPU kernel hardware everything that's running on your system basically these files are generated uh, basically as soon as your computer starts even while your computer is running everything in there is constantly being created deleted and it basically creates a folder for every single process running on your system moving down the directory structure here we have root root of course is basically you can think of it as the home directory for the root user the super user on the system now we had home up here slash home this is where all of your standard normal users have a folder but of course every computer has a super user a root user it gets its own special folder away from everybody else's uh, home folder why because the standard users on your system in my case the DT user has no business being in the root users folder I don't need to be playing around with that you guys on your systems do not play around in that particular folder the root folder you have no business uh, messing with that unless you really know what you're doing the next folder we need to discuss is slash run run is a newer uh, addition to the Linux hierarchy it is uh, system processes use it to store temporary data for their own purposes this is a directory that generally you never need to go in you don't need to touch it at all moving further down the list of our directories sbin sbin kind of like bin for binaries sbin is also binaries but the s is for super user this is all the binaries for the applications that pretty much only the super user uses on on the system so that would be f for processes that install stuff delete stuff format stuff you know really kind of dangerous stuff to play in the next directory we should mention is slash serve srv this is a server stuff i only have two subdirectories actually in this directory one for ftp file transfer protocol and http so uh hypertext transfer protocol this is you know web server stuff here I don't really know anything about this particular directory I've never actually played around in the slash server directory uh, the sys directory is the next directory slash sys stands for system uh, it's another kind of weird directory not exactly sure what the main purpose of this particular directory is but it basically it stores and allows modifications of the devices connected to the system so you see things like well devices and firmware hypervisor the kernel modules probably not a directory that we need to play around in either uh, pretty much most of the directories in the root directory you don't want to play around in uh, but saying that the very next one in the list temp tmp temp of course stands for temporary this a lot of temporary files get placed here uh, programs uh, have a need to place temporary files on your system they'll use it for a little while and then when they're done with it hopefully that stuff gets deleted sometimes it doesn't but the temporary folder uh, you can play around in it you, you won't cause any damage matter of fact you can play around in the temp folder and you don't even have to be super user you could actually put your own temporary files in this particular folder if you wanted to the next folder in the list is one of the more important ones here one of the ones that we would use on a regular basis as Linux users particularly Linux desktop users is the user directory slash USR now most people call it the slash user folder just as I did but technically it doesn't stand for user it stands for I believe Unix service repository I, I could be wrong about that but it actually is not is not a it doesn't stand for user but a lot of uh, your user files actually do end up getting placed in this particular directory 
uh, one of the things about the user directory, um, it is where it used to be like kind of the home folder way back in the day on, in the early Unixes. This is kind of where that stuff used to get placed before there was a home folder. Nowadays, of course, all your stuff is in the home folder, but still you have uh, in the user directory, we have subdirectories bin, wait, slash user slash bin. That is where all your binaries go. But we had slash bin in the root directory. So we have slash bin and we have slash user slash bin. Yeah, we have two different bins. But on most Linux systems these days, the slash bin actually is just a symbolic link to slash user slash bin. Slash user slash bin is the real bin. That is the ones that most Linux distros use and only use. Oh, I clicked on something there. Let me go back. And now, uh, speaking further on the slash user directory, uh, I mentioned it's kind of an important directory for a lot of us Linux desktop users is because a lot of stuff that we would play around with, if you're kind of a tweaker, you play around with your desktop a lot, uh, slash user slash share slash fonts, for example, is where all the fonts on your system are located. Well, if I can get to the font directory here. The slash user directory is rather large, but slash user slash share slash fonts is where your fonts are. Slash user slash share slash themes would be where your themes are. All your GTK themes are here. And so forth and so on. So these, these are directories that you as a Linux desktop user could play around in. You need pseudo privileges. You need to be super user to add and remove fonts from that font directory, add and remove themes from the theme directory. But for the most part, you're pretty safe playing around in the slash user directory. The next directory we want to discuss, and the last in the list, is slash var. Var stands for variable. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they call it a variable, because I'm assuming it's they're calling it that because a lot of the files and stuff are dynamically created in it maybe but that's no different than say slash run slash dev slash proc so I'm not really sure about that name but slash var some of the important stuff in slash var would be slash var slash log log of course is where all your log files would be located uh, for those of you setting up maybe a web server, you know, you're installing a LAMP stack on something, slash var slash www would be, of course, where all your files go for the web server. And that is it. Uh, that's all I'm going to discuss. I, again, I wanted to keep this kind of simple. I only wanted to go, you know, really one level deep on the directory structure here. I just wanted to show you every folder here uh, that is on slash root. I know... Uh, when I first started, I didn't understand what a lot of these folders were, what the names meant, what the purpose of these folders are. In fact, just going through them, there are still three or four of them I'm a little fuzzy on. I'm not sure of the purpose. And part of the reason is I'm not sure if the Linux community in general knows the purpose of some of these folders. Like I mentioned, the slash Etsy folder. It just seems like it's a, a mis, mis, mishmash of everything. Anything can get thrown in that folder. <laughs> so anyway, I hope this uh, this brief little tutorial helped you guys. Before I go, I do want to give a special thanks to all my patrons, all my Patreon supporters, A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Matt, Darkwin, Mark, Christian, Jake, Benjamin, Steven, Marcus, Interceptor, Bob, Lior, Omar, and Silvio. You guys are awesome. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.